Hey, and welcome to i45, a discussion about the future impact of this week's tech and world news leading towards a singularity. I'm Tristan Grace. I'm Nathan Waters. And this is i45. We're in reverse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a good one this week, uh, talking about the hive mind and uh, yeah. what that means. There's well, a... it's not like we talk about that every single week. No, nah, no, nah, never. <laughs> So we'll yeah. see how that goes, but uh, all the to- all the topics are actually relating to that. Like, uh, what, what have you got? Uh, a really cool connect hack merging the virtual reality with uh, telepresence. Cool. Uh, I've got this thing. Uh, they're talking about a Reddit secret Santa, and uh, how it's the largest gift exchange thing. Yep. Uh, distributed computing and distributed memory. Hells yeah. And then I have this absolutely fantastic little uh, phone app where you can actually translate words. The phone sees. It's a cool thing. It is incredible. Um, oh, who shall we start with? I, I'll go. There you go. <laughs> um, this is like we've talked about Connect hacks for probably the last two or three episodes now. They're, they're just amazing. They're going off like crazy, and this is the latest one, which is pretty insane. Um, the best way to explain it is kind of like it's telepresence, like you know when you talk on Skype type thing. It's you know webcam to webcam, but he gets this girl to um sit in some location. Um, with the Kinect cameras, I think he has two cameras or something. So it's, she, there's a 3D model of her. But then what they've done on top of that is they've put her into a virtual environment. So there's like a virtual office space yeah, yeah. with a desk and a lamp and everything. And they, um, he can basically, on his end, he's just got a screen with like a um, motion tracking thing. It looked like it was just attached to a re- Wii remote. Mm-hmm. And then he moves around and wherever he moves, he gets a different angle of her in 3D. Cool. So, so they take a 3D picture of her really and then put her in a virtual office and you talk to her that way. Yeah, but in real time. In real time. But which is which is pretty cool. So it's kind of getting it's it's like 3D virtual telepresence. Yeah. Is the best way to describe it. Because she it's re- in real time, she's actually there, it's not like a pre-made thing, and she's in an office virtual environment, which is pretty cool, like pretty crazy, but like a professional way to do it rather than just yeah. like someone sitting there and webcam to webcam, you can go, hey look, we're in an office, we're in an actual formalized setting now. Yeah, and you can change it all, all, all the virtual That's reality stuff. Nice. But the cool thing that um, he was playing with is because you have the head tracking stuff with um, the Kinect mm-hmm. and you have 3D and all this other stuff, um, you know when you actually talk on Skype or webcam, if someone's looking down, um, like not looking directly at the camera non-stop and in that fixed position, then it looks weird. It looks like they're looking mm. somewhere else. Mm. It'd be like our, um, you saw our, our interview the two weeks back, mm. episode 40, where we were, because we had the, the video set up over to the side, so we were looking down yeah. there, and so our eyes weren't anywhere near the mm. camera line. But with this, um, sorry, just with this, he had his, um, with the head tracking, he got her to point at one location, and then based on wherever he moved, she always remained in perspective, like always looking directly at it, always pointing directly at the camera. See, I could see that being a downside to a few things, especially like, you know, cam shows, like cam girls and all of that. You don't want to make eye contact, it lessens the mood. So that could be a big problem. But otherwise, I think that's pretty fantastic, following you around. You <laughs> okay. Damn you and finding flaws related to porn. I'm, I'm just saying. Well, maybe they could like draw a spot on them and then just focus Focuses on that Focuses on that, that I like. Yeah. No, he's he's like, all my sexual harassment charges that way. They were looking at me first. <laughs> there you oh, go. Yeah. No, I, I like that because it is actually a kind of like a virtual office environment. I can see this taking off. Like the yeah. future of this seems very large. Like imagine us in 3D in a virtual environment. Actually interacting with yeah. someone there that I mean a full on massive TV, full on massive screen and we see them sitting around a desk as well. Yeah. Actual full on conferencing really yeah like I'm sure, I'm sure you guys would love to see us in 3d oh definitely i mean the, the anguish you could get it'd just be like oh well there's lots of idiot outy bits which is kind of nice yeah with all the yeah. side flabs and mm. nice uh, okay well the one that i'm going on to from Word this lens? word lens yeah, which is incredible it's an iphone app at the moment i'm sure they're porting it to the other platforms too yeah damn it come to android <laughs> Where it's, uh, yeah, it's just absolutely phenomenal. It, you point it at some text and uh, it translates it for you. So say you want to translate something to Spanish at the moment, they've only got the Spanish dictionary and the English dictionary, so they're the two that translate between. You point it at a Spanish phrase and it automatically translates it on the fly while you're looking at it. It's just mind blowing. It's incredible. We are really yeah. actually breaking these walls down like just more and more and more. We're getting closer and closer towards the universal translator. We've already got like some te- uh, when we talk out loud, the computer Probably actually yeah. translates it. But like, imagine this actually traveling around in another country. You just can see what you want to read. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. The, the cool thing is, it's in it's in line as well. It's mm. not 
It's like, like it just they delete the word and then put the new one on top. But with the same text, the same font color, the same, same size, everything. the it looks it looks exactly the same. Like I don't know yeah. how they no, they're I don't doing know how that. They're like, that is incredible. But they're looking up the font and then trying to work grab mm. that font and then replicate it. This is one of the first items, uh, the first apps that I've seen on the phone that I think could be a fantastic, absolutely fantastic standalone product. Yeah. I think they'll get a lot of people using it on their phone, like going around with it going there. But I think there could be a very, very big market for these just being like a universal translator tablet. You go into, say, Dick Smith, you go into like your local electronics store, you pay a hundred bucks, oh, you get yeah, something well. that translates any language and you just look at it. Say a big iPad screen thing or like, you know, a big screen where you just, it looks at it and it reads and it translates for you on the fly. Sold as a universal translator. See, I'm still not, I'm not, still not with you with that whole like, you have separate devices for separate uses because that makes no mm. sense at all. No, well, see, I think it does. I, I, we see specialization in regards to a few things, but then, uh, wait, what do I say? Specialization, yeah, is fragmenting. But would you rather bring out your specialized translation device or would you mm. just use your phone or whatever you already got with you? Well, see, so you could just very well so, use your phone, but for, say, if, you're, if that's the main thing you're doing, it, like, say you're doing it eight hours a day, non-stop, you yeah. don't want to just be using your phone, you want to use a dedicated thing for it. And for people actually doing translating or for, say, teaching in a classroom, why do I want, say, like, you know, all these iPads doing all of that stuff there? Why don't I get a specialized one that just does everything perfectly? Yeah, I, if they're cheaper. Yeah, cheaper. Well, yeah. E even if they don't have to be, like, a lot of things that have a very specialized purpose are a lot more expensive. Yeah. Like, you know, the kitchen, I think, is most, uh, the, the best example. Yeah. Going into knives and very specialized things where you could just have one ultimate utensil. Who do you think? Do you think Google will buy these guys out? I don't know. I think Or at so. least, like, Probably. just rip them off and put it into goggles? Yeah. Google goggles? I, 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 there's someone to watch like this has been captured the imagination of everyone around the net recently yeah. I, I, I haven't been to a forum where this topic hasn't actually been it's, discussed it's pretty much like the, the AI app the killer AI app yeah at this point yeah very like, true when AI like uh, you had uh, was it um, Wikitude and oh, what's the big one the it starts with an L I don't know sorry oh my god I don't know well yeah <laughs> anyway, anyway. The, the big ones, but yeah, they, they weren't really killer. They were, like, they were cool little augmented reality things, but I don't think they really took off too much. No. Whereas this... This can. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the thing, the obvious way was a lot of people saying where the future goes with this, where does this keep on going? Apart from like, you know, specialized devices is, of course, the glasses. Imagine actually selling them. Yeah. It's just a thing. You go into another country, you put them in glasses and you can read their language. Well, that's what we're thinking with all this, like all the crazy virtual reality augmented stuff with like the connect and with the, mm. and you know, the phones and everything that's happening with that. Like we're literally building up all the software and all the processing and all the technical stuff for perfect HUD overlays. Yeah. Like why not just take that? Yeah. Like you're saying, why not just take the exact same concept of what they're doing, the exact same software, exact same algorithms and put the visual thing into glasses so that when you do look at something in Spanish, it just shows it to you in English. Mm. See, that, that could be the like, killer app for the glasses <laughs> to get the heart off the ground. Because we're, yeah, yeah, as you're saying, we've built all the software that laying the foundation for the, for the glasses to actually take hold. Because the problem yeah. now, if I'm sure there are glasses out there that do it, like apart from the technological constraints of being like, you know, LCD is not uh, yeah. dense enough, that's the word. Yeah, because it's yeah. arriving at your eye. And like, yeah. It's going to be transparent because you, know, you yeah. still want to see reality, you just want to overlay it perfectly. Yeah, a lot of stuff on there. But we're, we're building it there, but this is, uh, it's really progressing along quite nicely. Oh, yeah. It's going to be there very soon. It's going very rapidly as well. <laughs> it is. It's great. Very so, awesome. Love this thing. Um, when I go to another country, so I'm definitely going to be using this non-stop. Yeah. Be good. Good fun. Cool. Um, I'll go to this one, I think. Okay. Um, I only just read this, like, just before we started, so I'm not going to know too much about it. I'll admit. Um, it's, it's got quite... a picture of a blue brain nose, so I'm, I'm excited already. Like, I'm, I'm pumped. Uh, it's, it's an article called uh, Collective Memory. Um, basically, a group of researchers have developed this system for the military called RAMBO, which stands for... Hell yeah. Where's the acronym? Where's the acronym? Oh, no. Go on. Come on. Reconfigurable automatic... No, reconfigurable atomic memory for basic objects. And it and looks I'm sure like they came up with that first before having Rambo. They're like, let's yeah. call it Rambo. Or someone make up a stupid acronym, but <laughs> Rambo. Get the interns on this. Yeah. Okay. Um, it was originally an MIT thing back in 2001. It was funded by the National Science Foundation, which the Republicans are trying to actually cancel funding for at the moment. So, so topical. <laughs> well, go on. I read a lot of Reddit. It's pretty lame. Anyway, um, what this is doing is they they've worked out a system so that you have on mobile phones and any devices, you can actually have distributed computing 
and distributed memory, so you don't need any central server okay. for any computing at all. So kind of like LimeWire, but not sharing files, sharing computing. So computing and, and memory, well mainly memory for this one, because it was originally developed so that, um, say, soldiers out in the field with all their little, um, you know, say they've all got phones all out in the field, too, yeah. um, what they can do is anytime someone puts out a new piece of information, that automatically updates across all the phones, mm -hmm. and, and, and from any other phone as well, but there is actually, there's no central data location. Fantastic. Like, cause you know how that's what the reason the ESET was made in the beginning is because yeah. you know if you bomb it, then you know it doesn't go down because Just it's so around. decentralized. But the problem is almost now that um we've got that that setup, but all our data and all our computing is still generally done in one location. It's all still being yeah. What's I mean towards more of that, but yeah, the servers. I mean, cloud computing. Uh, cloud computing is a great example of like starting to get towards uh, decentralized computing. So the computing doesn't happen, it could happen in any various location all at once. Yeah. And this is doing the same thing with um, memory where, you know, if you have one file, it could be stored in segments anywhere across any of the devices. You may, you may not even know, it just, the devices automatically route the information where it needs to go and when that's, you need it, it automatically gets it idea. Like, yeah. rather than just transferring bandwidth and transferring that that way, I mean, memory is getting so cheap that you don't need to know exactly what part is all going there. Yep. Why not just have all the memory that's not currently being used in actually available to be used to be transferred to do whatever they like. Yep. And then just say when you install new programs and you need that memory, it just takes it back. It says, no, nah, just chuck onto something else. Yep. So the whole computer is always being used at all times. Yeah. Which, like which makes that. sense, like we're wasting so much yeah. bandwidth and data and stuff. Well, that's it, my memory isn't being fully utilized either with my CPU right now. It yeah. should always be going at 100%. And the cool thing with this, it wasn't like, um, it wasn't like say you have a dozen devices and whenever anyone updates it, every single dozen device has the exact same copy of all yeah. the information. It's not that, it's like, you know, say you have a dozen devices, there might be say two or three that have, you know, the same information. But whenever anyone else needs that information, they just get it. Yeah. So then even if like a couple of those devices go down, you still have a backup of the data somewhere. So it's, it's like, yeah, this decentralized memory, which would be, I think that's where it's, it, the entire internet seems to be going towards just absolutely everything decentralized. I, I, I'd actually never lose data. I, I agree with that in, to a sense, but the, just think about cloud computing now, it's like, oh yeah, it's all stored up in the cloud. Yeah. But that's actually getting more towards centralized stuff because you have clusters of servers Amazon yeah. servers and Google servers and Facebook servers and all of that. Yeah, so and it's I, very much not shared everywhere. Yeah. Well, I have a feeling it'll probably hap it's happening like that, but then we'll go beyond that and we'll be like, yeah, well, yeah. we need to decentralize these clusters now. Yeah, because uh, one of them will fail and then everyone's yeah. like, right. Yeah, everyone's like, <laughs> my data's gone. I can't access anything. Yeah. Especially if we're all running completely in the cloud and, you know, yeah. the cloud goes down because, you know, Amazon's decided we're going to put our servers in one location and it floods or it storms yeah. or gets bombed or whatever. You know, you know, I think I'm going to make a prediction that I, I, I think that uh, this is actually going to be the, the big thing that all of our memory and all of our CPU time and for the vast majority of computers and stuff are going to be always utilized near a hundred percent. I think that's going to be a big, big thing that's actually going to start going up. Yeah, so we'll be able to start selling our actual runtime, selling processing, and it'll be beneficial to have it all going there non-stop. Well, yeah, imagine, um, where is it, folding at home and setting it home. Yeah. But like you actually great. get you actually get paid for your And I know processing. there have been people trying that. Yeah, uh, it but just hasn't hit. It hasn't hit yet, and it's still, if you, if maybe not money isn't the best way, because the actual monetary value of the processing speed there isn't the best, but maybe for something else. Game, the game. Yeah, a game there, yeah. You get points, which I guess they already do, but the points should be worth something. Yeah. Something with that. there'll be a way, but we're, yeah. we're, there's a lot of waste here. And if we're talking about pure efficiency and all that, like yeah. singularity-wise and everything, everything going becoming a computer, that has to be a progression. Yeah, utilize 100% all the time. Actually, I'll just quickly segue from singularity. Um, the singularity yeah, looks like me. Do <laughs> what? Yeah. Da! Shane Sorry. Leg. Shane Leg. Everyone, go look up Shane Leg and do a comparison. <laughs> um, yeah, the singularity summit of 2010. Uh, they've just released all their videos and they're up online now. Haven't had a chance to look through them, but they look pretty cool. I mean, you got uh, you got Vassar, Michael Vassar, and the Darwinian method. Oh, he's cool. Yeah, no, it's Michael Vassar. Yeah, I think I'm friends with him on Facebook actually. Oh, Scott. Yeah, me and him are like this, man. Tight. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, you got Curse while speaking and uh, Gertzel and. It's not Curse.